Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I've been taking this week to talk about Joshua. Now, there's a lot more in this book than, than what I'm going to get to. In fact, I'm only going to get into chapter 6 today. And maybe another week I'll come back and do some more. But Joshua gives us a really good look at who God is. I know it's a history book of, of the Israelites going into the promised land. But it's more than that. It's a, it's a theology book about the care of God towards his people. So today, let's look at the sixth chapter. I'm going to read the first five verses and then a couple of other verses after that. Joshua 6, verse 1 begins. Now the gates of Jericho were tightly shut because the people were afraid of the Israelites. No one was allowed to go in or out. But the Lord said to Joshua, I have given you Jericho, its king, and all its strong soldiers. You and your fighting men should march around the town once a day for six days. Seven priests will walk ahead of the ark, each carrying a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you're to march around the town seven times with the priests blowing the horns. When you hear the priests give one long blast on the ram's horn, have all the people shout as loud as they can. Then the walls of the town will collapse and the people will charge straight into the town. Well, I'm not a military man, but if I were, I would have to say, this is one strange strategy. I mean, God is telling Joshua to tell the army to walk around the town with the priest ahead, not say a word, not do a thing, just walk around. On the second day, walk around again. The third day, walk around again, all the way through the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, he says to Joshua, walk around seven times. Now, this is the difference. And if I had been the people in Jericho looking out, my first thoughts of the days one, two, three, four, five would have been, these folks are nuts. They really think that's a way to fight? I mean, come on. That'll never get you anywhere. And then on the seventh day, as they're going around seven times, it's like, gee, are they lost? <laughs> Can't they count? Look at, look at those crazy folks. They're doing all that goofy stuff. What in the world is in their head? But it says that they did that. And they walked, marched around the seventh day seven times. And then, interesting enough, in verse 16, it says, The seventh time around, as the priests shouted the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, Shout! Okay. They did that. Again, if you're on the inside looking at this, it's like, what do they think they're doing? Are they nuts? I don't know what they shouted. I guess maybe just loud shouts. I doesn't say. I guess it doesn't matter. But then <laughs> verse 20 says, when the people heard the shout of the ram's horn, horns, they shouted as loud as they could, suddenly the walls of Jericho collapsed and the Israelis charged straight into the town and captured it. Now, there's not much to say except this is an amazing story. It's not necessarily a model for how to militarily fight things. At least I don't know of any other instance where 
anybody's ever thought to try it, much less that it worked. But what's significant here is that the army of Israel listened to and followed the direction of God, even though they were approaching what seemed to be an immense task. Jericho was very fortified. It had a reputation for repelling anyone who tried to invade. And here they are just walking around with their mouth shut. You see, sometimes God's ways seem strange. They don't always fit our thinking patterns. And the problem we have is when we think our thinking patterns make more sense than God's ways. For example, God says to show compassion on people. The Lord's Prayer that many of you pray. Father, forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, we forgive, God forgives. We don't forgive, mm, not a good plan. God's ways are always better than ours. And even if we don't know what his way is, we can still say, God, show me. There are several scriptures that say, if you ask for wisdom, God will give it to you. And then, after God shows you his way, you have to do what he says and wait. Wait for him to work. <clears throat> I know you and I are part of a culture that doesn't know how to wait. We are very impatient. We want our whatever now. Not later. Now. But God's never that much in a rush. But yet his way is always the way to go in life. And I hope you found that out, and I hope you're actively seeking that. And if you're not, well, I'd like to challenge you today. Why not seek God's way for your life? What have you got to lose? Will you think about it? Thanks so much for listening. If you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can to help meet your needs as fast as we can. I'll be back next week. Share some more thoughts. Hope you'll be with me. Have a great weekend. May the Lord's blessings be upon you and your whole household. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again.